So, as some of you may know, my son is in basic training right now at the Air Force. And I was trying to think of what I was going to do for him and get him for his graduation present. I was going to make him something with the Air Force logo. So, I have some spare wood out there and I've been kind of dabbling back into the woodworking. So this is going to be a woodworking video just in case you guys wanted to know. So hope you enjoy it. If not, wait for the next FPV video. Talk to you guys later. So I'm planning the mahogany that I chose. This is just some shots of that. I'm cleaning up, obviously. This is me applying the logo and I'm using a knife to trace the outlines of both sides of those lines because where the dark spots are are the spots of the wood that I want to keep. Um, and I'm using a knife to cut the, the grains so like if it gets erased or sanded over that it still it still stays. Not to mention it'll prevent a really clean edge once I start chiseling and, and hollowing out that wood. Uh, basically, everything that's white is going to be removed, with the exception of the most of the outside. Now I'm taking out the insides. I'm leaving, again, the black behind, so I have a better visual on what to follow, because if I'm being honest, this is the second attempt. I kind of screwed up the first attempt. Now I'm taking my router, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking the bulk of the material out, out of the depth that I've chosen. I'm not going to the line. That's where I screwed up on my first attempt. I, I followed the wrong line, and I have to pretty much plane it all flush and start again. So I'm just taking the, the bulk center out um, with the router so I can go back in with the chisel like I'm doing now. And it's a much easier process to get that chisel done when most of that material on the inside is out. So if you guys are ever doing anything similar, I highly recommend this is the process you take. It's just, it's easier. Um, I would have used a smaller router if I had one, but I only have two routers and they're both the same size. And one I have fixed on my table and the other one is my plunge router that I just kind of keep out and open for times like this. Getting to these corners were kind of a challenge. That's why I used the X-Acto knife. Um, I only have one chisel that goes down to a quarter inch. That's the smallest chisel I have, so I wasn't able to get right like, really in there. Not to mention, um, there's this fra this wood was really really fragile, so I used the super glue to uh, do a lot of repairs, like you just saw. There was quite a few repairs that are captured, but you can't see any of them, and that's really what matters the most. So this took a really long time. These are all sped up to about like 2,000%. And uh, I believe this took like almost like an hour or two of just straight sitting down and, and going at it, chiseling. I took my time. I wanted to make sure that all the the cavities were as perfect as I could make them. So you can see I'm using super glue and I'm spraying something on it. That something is called is an activator. And what it does is it instantly cures the super glue so you could continue working without having to wait for the glue to dry. And I had to do this a bunch of times. What I'm doing now is I'm taking my X-Acto knife and I'm scoring the outsides um, as deep as, as I could get the blade in because I, I really want that edge to be defined. Um, so when I go in with the chisel like I, like I just did and make this taper, it... Um, it was a clean line at the edge, and it worked out really great. Scoring the lines, chiseling it out, scoring the line, chiseling it out, and just that series. It just took a long time. So now I'm I'm putting a mask on, and I'm removed the masking. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna fill it with epoxy. So now I'm performing a seal coat, so when I were to pour the epoxy, it'd be less chances of bubbles to escape and ruin what I'm trying to do. Um, so now I'm putting in the colors. Now I did do a test set um, that wasn't filmed just to get my colors right and make sure that I, I, I had the process done. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to screw it up. So now I'm mixing the epoxy. You have to mix for two minutes, transfer to a cut, mix for an additional two minutes, and then add the colors and whatnot. So I'm just adding the colors, and you can see I'm hitting it with the torch a little bit to pop all the surface bubbles. So I, I, I mixed it pretty vigorously, and I learned later 
that you didn't really need to mix so vigorously, but that vigorous mixing created a lot of bubbles. What we're doing now is we're creating a oak backing. And the reason I'm doing that is because the mahogany itself, it actually, it, it warped a little bit and I wanted to make it straight again. So I figured this was the best way to do it rather than like just resurfacing the, the mahogany itself. So this is me just, you know, laminating two pieces together to get ready to add this piece on. Now I'm planing it down to the, the thickness I want and cleaning up. Now I'm squaring the mahogany and the Air Force logo. So when I transferred it, I wasn't like perfectly square with the edges. And so now I had to you know, make sure that all four corners were square with the logo itself. So, and I want to recess this into the oak. So this is what I'm doing now. I'm you know, I traced it on and then I took my knife and I scored those lines and here I am taking that router again and getting that depth set and going to hog out as, the, as much of that material as possible. Now, I should have put this on like some kind of you know, surface that wouldn't have allowed it to slide around so much, but, you know, yeah, hindsight's always twenty twenty. It still worked out. So I didn't go to the edge. Again, I wanted it to be really nice and clean, at least as clean as possible. So here I am chiseling the edges to make sure it's a nice clean fit. It took a couple attempts of like dry fitting and, and then chiseling some more and then dry fitting and then chiseling some more. And I mean, I guess that's to be expected, but it ended up working out really well in the end. And I was really pleased with how the contrast between the oak and the mahogany looked um, when it's all said and done. So it wasn't necessarily, you know, like a bad thing that I had to do this. It just wasn't the original plan when I first started it. So you can see I have a bandage. Um, you should never chisel towards your hand or any part of your body because if it slips uh, those things are super sharp like razor sharp and um, it'll cut you just like it did me that cut was actually pretty deep I probably should have got stitches someone would have said I should have got stitches but I just taped it up and dealt with it so here I am getting ready to glue this now I want because that mahogany um, warped I'm gluing it to my bandsaw bed because it's the flattest surface that I could remove that was big enough to do and it totally worked I was really happy that was a good trick that I did now I'm sanding and I'm just doing that because the colored epoxy was proud of the wood and I wanted it all like down to that one surface so I didn't get one edge um, really well on the chiseling I went a little too far so I had to fill it in with some gap filler and that's what I'm doing there So now I'm just getting the final dimensions of the the oak to what I want. I'm taking a block plane here and I'm chamfering the edges to give it a more, um, uh, I guess, a cleaner look. Um, it didn't work out the way I'd hoped. I mean, it worked. I had some tear out. I didn't do that with the oak. I just actually just did it with my uh, my my table router. And so that's what I did here. That's what I'm doing. I'm putting a 45 degree chamfer on the, the oak. I know this looks done, but that's only because I didn't film the first seal coat. So I already threw a seal coat on and let it dry for 24 hours. And this is me applying a second seal coat because I didn't want any um, issues with the wood. Both oak and mahogany are very porous and they will absorb this epoxy really well and it'll just put bubbles all over it. And so I, I wanted to prevent that as much as I could. And unfortunately, it wasn't even it wasn't even good enough. So what you're seeing here is me knocking down that second seal coat just to give it a nice, even coat. This is actually my second flood coat. The first flood coat, it was successful, but there was a couple spots that kept doing what I didn't want it to do and emitting bubbles and me hitting it with a torch or whatever ended up ruining those few spots. So I sanded it all down as much as I could. And then now I'm applying this, this beautiful second flood coat, um, which actually totally worked out because 
the the first flood coat, while it was a mistake, it sealed everything. Like there was no more um, issues after this. <laughs> so this flood coat went down perfect. So, and I'm using the light and my torch to get what little bubbles were left. There wasn't too many though on this second flood coat. So now I'm just taking the sander and I'm knocking off all the drips on the edges. And this is pretty good actually. Um, I started with, you know, 120 grit and I knocked it down to a 220 grit and it came out really clean. And you can tell that there's, a, I, I threw a seal coat on the back of this just because I didn't want the back side to breathe and not the front side because then it would warp again. Now I'm routing in the keyhole so you could hang it on the wall and, and that's that. It was really simple. You know, sand off my lines and make the edge so, and that's pretty much it. And it's done, but man, look at that. Matt, this, this is for you, kid. Like, <laughs> I wasn't sure where you were going in life um, a few times, but I'm really proud of the man you've become and the journey you've chosen. I'm, I'm excited to watch you just go through through life right now. Uh, it, this has been a transition, you know, like for the past 19 years, you've been by my side this whole time and and now you're not. But I knew this day was coming and I'm, I'm glad that, I'm glad that you just took it on head on. I'm super proud of you.